Selecting the right software for your company's workflow can be one of the most important operational and financial decisions an organization makes. So when you're the one selling the software, how do you get companies to commit? And perhaps more importantly, how do you get them to stick around? Today, we'll be talking about what it takes to grow an enterprise customer base with Jotform's very own VP of Sales Operations, Steve Hardert. Welcome to Momentum, a podcast by Jotform where we talk about the technology, productivity tips, insights, and best practices that help us move forward in business and in life. Let's get started. Three, two, one. Momentum. All right, so I'm here with Steve Hardert, VP of Sales Operations at Jotform, and I know you're no stranger to podcasts in your time, Steve, so I think it's overdue that we actually had you here on Momentum, so welcome to the show. Oh, thank you very much. Glad to be here. Yeah, it's great to have you. So what I'd like to talk about today is everything that sort of grows goes into growing and sustaining a software solution for enterprise level mm-hmm. organizations. Jotform has always been and always will be a great online form and productivity pool, tool for individuals and, and small businesses. But in recent years, we've really been able to successfully scale our enterprise level solution called Jotform Enterprise. Uh, and that's a totally different ball game, as I'm sure you can yeah. attest to. And that's where you come in as VP of sales operations. So I I thought it would be really great to just get your insight and perspective mm-hmm. sort of on the day-to-day of what goes into that. Um, I don't know, maybe a good place to start would just be some context around your own personal background uh, before diving into what your role here now entails. Okay. Yeah, as far as uh, just my time here with Jotform, I started off as the chief marketing officer uh, about three or four years, about four years ago now. We started we got this idea to put together the enterprise product, which Mm -hmm. is more or less for uh, bigger solutions for bigger types of companies. And um, anyway, cut to the chase on it. Um, Our CEO asked me to kind of move over and kind of help ferry that through the development Mm -hmm. process, get it up and going. And that's where I'm at now. So we're continuing to grow the enterprise side of the equation, and um, it's becoming a very popular product for our users. Yeah, which is great. So it was about three or four years ago, like you said, that we really started this initiative. And it sounds mm-hmm. like we made the decision kind of early on to separate enterprise from uh, you know, our small business or smaller business right. uh, solution. Why, why is that? Like, Why don't we just combine the two? It's like, oh, it's the same product, right, at the end of the day. Why, why separate these two so distinctly? Yeah, at a certain point, they, they are the same product at, the, at its most basic core function, which is creating forms and the, mm-hmm. the form submission data part of it. But then it splits off because our standard products um, is really for a single user. Mm -hmm. So if you're um, like a bakery or you might be a dry cleaner or you can be be a a doctor's office, anything, any kind of, you just need a form, but you're only going to have one person creating forms and one person getting the data. That's what our standard product is for. Enterprise is designed for multiple users at a location. For example, you know, we've got some very large companies that we work with, some of them I can't name, but many in the Fortune 500 are using us. And they might have multiple departments that need to use something like Jotform mm-hmm. to collect it, help collect data. and But they might have somebody, say, in the HR department's doing some part of it, operations is doing part of it, accounting is doing part of it, you might have somebody over in marketing doing it, and they need to have this kind of under one umbrella. And mm-hmm. so we can help offer under our side of it. One is you've got this one main collection point where it can all be kind of created inside of it. But then there's also a security level that comes on top of it. Because if you had, say, 25 users at one company that have mm-hmm. individual accounts, all 25 of those people actually own that data. The company doesn't, those 25 people do. Mm. The enterprise, the company now owns the data because it's under this umbrella. That's an important distinction. Right. And you've got, and like say, an ad- administrator, and then you've got what we call users underneath it. The users are the ones that create the forms, can actually go ahead and mm-hmm. look at the data, things like that. But this admin can actually control access to it. Okay. So we offer things like single sign-on. We have uh, higher levels of security that you can get through it. Um, you're also on your own standalone server, vis-a-vis where our 
uh, standard products are on a shared server. So there's, there's a lot of different functionality that we have that's under the hood that people may not be aware of, for, you know, and even things as simple as uh, data residency. You know, if you're in Australia, we actually have servers that are down in Australia. Mm. Because, uh, Australian security laws say data must be held within Australian borders, so we can do it that way. We have some here in the U.S., we have them all over Europe. And so we can, we can meet those kinds of levels of security that companies, companies require because that's what their governments are asking to have done. Sure, so we can do those kinds of things. Sure, and it's it's requirements that if you are a single user or, or a small business, these wouldn't really relate to you as much. Like they aren't quite as necessary. But if you are a larger enterprise level organization, it sounds like yeah, the productivity as far as collaboration with a team, having multiple people, uh, having that security net is 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 really important. Um, so so that makes sense from like a, a logistical perspective. I guess I'm curious as we started growing this out, the enterprise side of our business and establishing all of this, how long did that kind of take to form into what it is today, where we do have the Fortune 500 companies? Like, was that sort of an overnight process? Did it take months, years to, to implement? How did that grow, like, since you started working on the enterprise level side of things? It, well, we had it... it it's kind of the enterprise system right now, as we know it, is kind of a uh, an outgrowth of a very early standalone product that we had probably 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. And it was a non-premise solution and a very old, it wasn't a SaaS solution like we have now. And that that customer came to us and said, we want to upgrade to your latest version. And we said, we don't even support this anymore Mm -hmm. because it was such an older, it was what we call on-prem, right? On-premises solution. That it spurred an idea, why don't we offer this thing up so we can get into larger types of companies? And so to kind of take our existing product, our standard product, and move it into, say, the enterprise, took us about six months of development time to kind of get to the point where we thought we had something we could work with. But in the interim of that, we were talking to this customer, and they had an awful lot of security questions. And they said, well, can it do this? Can it do this? I mean, literally, we went back and forth for months answering security questions. And there was a lot of um, and just hesitation on everybody's part from our internally here at JotForm. We were, is it worth doing this? Mm-hmm. And my response was, investment. yeah, because it was a big time investment. It was a big, not, and a money investment, too. We had staff time that had to go into it. And I said, look, if we can solve this company's security issues, we can solve anybody's security mm-hmm. issues. And that bore out to be true. So um, no one's come close to asking us these same kinds of security types of levels mm-hmm. of questions, but it prepared us for what we were going to be going into. And so now companies come to us and they'll they'll ask us to fill out security questionnaires, those kinds of things. But it was about six months to get a product up and going. And then from there, it probably took, and we continue to evolve the product. I mean, we keep adding new features and adding all sorts of new types of uh, integrations and things like that. It probably took about another year after that to kind of get it to where it kind of blossomed into the product it is now. Sure. So about a year and a half total development time, and now we can we just continue to grow into it now. Yeah, makes sense. And you come at it from a unique perspective because you've been on the smaller business side of you know our our company. We call it BSG, Bronze, Silver, Gold. Uh, you've worked on that side, and now you flipped over to mm-hmm. enterprise. So from from your perspective, comparing the two, sort of what what's the process of getting a client? On board, or just getting clients in general from right. BSG to enterprise. I, I take it they're going to be a little bit more time intensive with uh, JotForm Enterprise. But how how does that process differentiate getting business if you're an enterprise level solution mm-hmm. versus small business solution? Yeah, on our standard plans, like again the bronze over gold, that's very self serve. Mm-hmm. They come to the website, they sign up. They can, you know, it's a freemium model, so they can yep. they can go the free product, and once they move up, they need more features or more forms or whatever. Yep. More they data. can they can move up to the paid to the paid platforms. On the enterprise part of it, they actually we have a, a form they fill out says you know obviously get their contact information, and if they have any questions, we're looking for somebody that can do this. We have a minimum number of users, right? Minimum number of five users you have to have to even start working on the enterprise. Mm-hmm. So they have to come to us with a little bit more than just I want to have this feature, but I I'm right. a single person. So they come to us. They talk, you know they'll submit a, a you know this form, this inc- this question form, and then we turn it over to one of our business development managers, who then will go out and contact that person, depending on where they're located, as how that gets sent off. They, in turn, then could start answering questions. They might do a demonstration on it because a lot of them are very curious. We'll talk to CIOs, IT directors, HR directors, even CEOs will come into the mix. And they want to see how it works, but then they start asking questions about security, mm-hmm. right? And then they'll start asking questions about ease of use. And then there's all these other things that come into it that 
become part, it becomes very much a key part of their uh, just their day to day business operations. Mm-hmm. Um, so they've got this stack of technology that they're working with, and how do we fit into it? And so there's it's just a much more involved purchasing decision. You know, one, it's a cost, but two, it's a security issue. It's it's an ease of use ease of use type of issue. Those kinds of things. So it's just much more involved for Definitely. those people to do it. So as opposed to people kind of coming to sign up and going. They have they just there's a process, and it can usually take a you know month, month and a half maybe for that whole process to kind of start to finish is about right. the average on it. Right, which which makes sense. I mean, again, if you're a BSG user, uh, there, there's not too much commitment. It's like, hey, you can try the free product, maybe upgrade to bronze for a month, something like that, see how it works for you, mm-hmm. swap it out. But if you're an enterprise-level organization, a huge organization, Fortune 500, smaller, what have you, you already have an integrated technology stack. This is going to ripple across your entire organization, all your productivity flows. You have to sort of network and patch it into what you're already using mm-hmm. and make sure everyone one knows how to use it. It's just a much bigger investment overall if you're looking at it from an enterprise perspective rather than a single use perspective. Um, I think it's important mm-hmm. for any uh, software solution that's trying to expand into enterprise to recognize that and know that, and especially be prepared with um, security. It seeming like is such a huge theme for for enterprise. So the fact that you can build, we can build those bulwarks and make people feel comfortable with our solution on an enterprise level um, seems to be. One of the reasons for our success, mm-hmm. uh, if you had to sort of hone in on other components of our success in growing the enterprise side of the business, what have been some interesting learnings from that? Is it uh, we've had to think differently about trying to gather leads, collect leads? Is it just putting the word out there? Is it just waiting for the leads to come to us? Uh, what has been the component of actually growing that to more and more enterprise users? Yeah, for the most part, it's been existing users, existing users on our standard plans have needed more. Okay. Right. So they may either you know, they have multiple people using us, like I mentioned earlier, that now they want to put it underneath one kind of umbrella, or they realize that they need more. Mm-hmm. They just need they want they want to they want their own domain on it. So rather than it saying jotform.com and then the form, you know, the the, the ten digit, twelve digit form number, they want to have my company dot right. forms right. dot you know dot com. Yeah, so it looks like theirs, right? right? So it gives them an individual branding, which mm-hmm. you cannot get under our standard plan. Right. So that's one of the things they want to have because it gives a confidence to their customers that when they fill this form out, it is with that mm-hmm. company. So there's that part of it. The other part of it, it gives them more control over just who uh, the data, and that's one thing they really want to have control over. And then the integrations with their with their technology stacks that they have inside. Those are the big things. But I would say probably the first thing is just that that security level. They always ask us about our security, and that's right. the first thing that we and we can address that. You know, ten thousand different ways. Yep, it sounds like you're very practiced. Well, we, yeah, we are, and and you know, we're we're constantly evolving our security. Right, we, there's always new threats out there, but we're always looking at what we can do, what we can do to improve. Um, you know, we use, for example, our hosting services are either uh, Google Cloud or AWS. Mm-hmm. We've had people come to us and say, "Well, we need you to analyze." We fill out this this questionnaire on security so we can analyze it, and we'll say, "Well, we use AWS or we use Google Cloud," and they say, "Oh, then no problem, because we use them too." So that's we can skip right. that whole part, and then they're coming down to some more nuts and bolts types of things about what we can offer them, and you know, two factor authentication, mm-hmm. those kinds of things, right? So having that kind of in- infrastructure underneath us. Solves a whole, For sure. a whole bunch and bunch of security problems that might pop up someplace, and it really is a back and forth between you and them. Probably, like you said, for weeks, even months mm-hmm. at a time, to ensure that you're the right fit for each other. Right, which is yeah, it, it's so different from I think how a lot of our BSG um, users have experienced Shopform before. And what one thing I do like. Um, and that I was, I was reading about, I know that our CEO, Idekin, has talked about it before. We get people to <clears throat> upgrade not by taking things away. We don't beat them with a stick. We give them a carrot of, hey, you could do even more. Right. You know, we don't go to our gold users and, you know, we aren't stripping them of their capabilities. You know, we offer so many of our products to even our free users. Mm-hmm. But it's just like, hey, you could do even more by doing this rather than I think I've seen some companies sort of 
do that, and hey, you have to upgrade or you're going to lose X, Y, Z. We haven't done that. I think that's hopefully made um, users a lot more conducive to being uh, enterprise members at the at the end of the day, which which I like. Yeah, well, very much so. I mean, if you look at our standard plan model, it's it's really consumption based, right? Definitely. So on the free on the free plan, and we and we have you know a lot of people on the free plan because that's mm-hmm. really what they need. And but if they need more, then they can start moving up to the paid yep. tiers. And like you said, we're not taking anything away. It's you just get more of it. Yep. So if you're going to consume more. You'll get more on this next level. It's going to cost you a few more dollars every month, but you can get more. And then when they get to the higher tiers and they say, we need those multiple users to do things, that's where they can come over to on the enterprise side and they can do everything they still want to do. And they can still bring over their forms. They can bring over all their data. They just turn it on the next day and it's, wow, we have all these other people that can, mm-hmm. can collaborate on things. Right, right. And I think uh, the the types of companies and organizations that – find the need to have more. Um, I'd like to talk about that a little bit, because I also think that's that's an interesting thing to discuss. I think for BSG users or even freemium users, um, pretty much it could be anyone who uses JotForm on mm-hmm. a sing- single level, right? Like, no matter what business you have, you need an online form, most right. likely. But who, what types of companies and industries are the ones that you are finding need that extra level of security or need that multi-level uh, access mm-hmm. uh, uh, mostly, are there are there certain trends? Yeah, there's really kind of three three markets that seem to be the most popular f- for us. On once we healthcare again, mm-hmm. healthcare obviously is a big form intensive yep. industry in yep. general, but they have special security issues of HIPAA Definitely. things like that. So you know they're dealing with personal health information. Mm-hmm. In the industry is PHI, very important. right? Absolutely, top notch there. So we have a lot of you know. So we can meet those demands. Education market, same thing. A lot of forms, but also you're dealing with children, mm-hmm. right? So anybody under 18, we've got to make sure that's secured. Mm-hmm. And then also governments. We have a lot of state. We have cities. We have local, county, state governments and federal governments that are using us for different things. And the same thing, right? They want to make sure the security or the data is stored within their bo- their borders and whatnot. And uh, for them, it's, again, they they all have these systems that they're working with, whether it's something like Salesforce or HubSpot or MailChimp or any of these other, you know, any of a lot of, of CRMs in there. Like, How does this <laughs> stuff fit into mm-hmm. those systems? Because they don't want to sit there and have to run a square peg into a round hole. We actually, you know, I jokingly refer to it as like a Lego system. We just snap in, and through our integrations, that data can just be pushed right into their into their systems right now, and their data flow works perfectly for them. Right. And then right. all the other features that we offer, things like you know approvals and all those other kinds of you know features that we have built into JotForm, make the whole thing work so much better. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we've got. Well, basically, I don't want to say who they are because, again, I don't want to. I just don't want to bring their name up. But they, um, this company that's done in Los Angeles, uses the approvals like crazy. They have something like thirty or forty people that have to go through the approval mm. process, and it saves them a huge amount of time. Absolutely. Um, we've got a charter school system in Nevada that uses us for their registration. They used to do the paper. And they said people oh, get people getting lost and paper yeah, getting moved around and had sending it out. They've said that by using JotForm, they have saved um, countless hours every week. I'm sure it's completely streamlined the process. They do thousands of dollars they're saving, probably tens of thousands of dollars in just paper costs, not counting all the all the you know the the human labor costs that goes on top of that. So the, you know they're thrilled with it because the parents of their, their parents of the students are thrilled because they have everything they need. They can fill it out in the comfort of their couch on a phone, on a laptop, on a tablet, whatever. School gets it back. It's all there, and it goes right in the mm-hmm. system, and things can be automated. So they're what took probably like six or seven days to do before. Now they're doing it in like less than an hour. Absolutely. And that's that's a huge time saver for everybody. And so those are the kind of things that people use us for. It can be just as simple as we just need to collect contact information or we need to we're doing e commerce on it. We're selling licenses. We've got, you know, counties that sell marriage licenses through it. They've got people that are selling other kinds of, you know, whatever things a county might sell to somebody. People are can do it online and it makes it very, very easy for people to do it. Right, right. And I think it's it's cool. Like like you mentioned, not only do we have our, our suite of tools, like a use case could be super simple, maybe a company just needs a bunch of registrations or online forms for something like else, but uh, 
especially on the enterprise level, we're willing to work with you and build with you. Mm-hmm. You know, we have engineers. We we can use our, our API to match up anything and sync whatever you need. Uh, it's that kind of attention that I think also helps gravitate business towards us because that's the kind of stuff that companies will also talk about to other companies. Right. I, I feel like if you're talking with a, a friend at a, you know just getting drinks or something, you're like, yeah, Jotform. They actually built a solution for us and they're able to mesh us with our workflow. It was great. I think that's the kind of thing that goes a long way towards um, building good credibility, especially mm-hmm. as you're trying to scale the the business, which um, which I think is is amazing. And I definitely think it's one of the main reasons that we've been able to be successful as we've as we've leveraged this. Yeah, and I think the other part that shows our success is yes, you know, companies when they come on, we, they usually sign up for a one year contract mm-hmm. to start with, and then but they're coming back on the renewal process. Our renewal rate of people. Staying on board and keep continuing to use us, so that, continues to grow. That was that was my that was my next question. We've talked about you know some of the the great things that we're able to offer as an enterprise level solution. And again, this can be applied to, to any company out there. Anyone who's, who's listening, some of the basic foundations of what you should look for if you're trying to grow an enterprise business. Mm-hmm. Um, and we have these things that we offer. How do we? keep them coming back? Like, why is it that they, okay, they sign on for a year, it's normally like an annual contract, and then what goes into the decision, oh, let's, ex- let's extend for another year, or two, three, four, five, because that's almost almost more important. Like, you have to have the new business, but you have to have the same business coming back, because that's how you grow. So, how have we been able to find success in that? I think two, two, Two tacks on that one. One, we've got a good product, mm-hmm. right? It works. It works right out of the box. We're on minimal training. Somebody can just jump on and get yep. moving, right? So that's the key. And that's Jotform across the board, mm-hmm. whether it's enterprise or our standard plan. That's the first thing. It's very simple to use, and anybody can do it. The second part of it is we offer, you know, on our enterprise side, you get a higher level of tech support. You can actually, you've got somebody you can work with, somebody who can help you out solve problems and things like that. And that's... That is the most important part. It's like we mm-hmm. also, you know, in the marketing parlance, there's before sale and post sale. Post sale sometimes is more important than the, than the pre sale. Right. And so we can help them out if they run into a technical problem. Say they're working on the API and they can't get something to work. Our engineers and our support people can jump in there and help them out, make this thing work for them. Same thing if they just we can't get this integration to work right. Something like something's going wrong, and we can sort it out for them. Mm-hmm. And these are things that we cannot offer really on the standard plans right. because it's going to be feasible. Yeah, it just, right. it's not yeah. feasible when you've got you know millions and millions of users yep. like we have. But on the enterprise, because everybody's kind of their own individual little world, so mm-hmm. to speak, it, it's easier for us to go in there and help them out and make it work. And because of that, again, we're responsive to their needs. Mm-hmm. It works with their systems. Like, why would they want to change? Yeah, I mean, it's really what it comes down to. Yeah, like I mentioned, our our engineers will go to bat with you for you, and uh, that can make the world of difference in making your solution like work with everything else you have going on in your yep. organization. I've heard the term, um, can't remember where I heard it, but uh, sticky. Our mm-hmm. product is sticky. What what is what does that mean? Sticky means once it's in there, they they start finding out other uses for it, and it's it's works so well with their systems. They're kind of like, why would we ever get rid of this? Mm-hmm. I mean, it, I'll give you an example. We, Marin County, north of here of San Francisco, they came in using it for one th- one thing and one thing only to start with. This is when COVID broke out. Mm-hmm. Suddenly they had a, they had all the COVID test sites and needed people that could do things without having, here's a piece of paper, fill yep. it out, hand it yep. back to me, right? So they needed something that they could do remotely. Pretty soon other departments in Marin County went in and said, what is this thing you guys have? We've never seen this before, and it, oh, can we get in on this? Mm-hmm. And so they would buy they would buy a couple of seats for them. Pretty soon, more and more departments came to it, and now they realize how easy it is to use, how efficient it is for their day to day business operations, and how the data then can be pushed into their systems, and they have all this stuff moving in real time, so they can get real time stats, they can get real time data updates, the data gets moved in. I mean, they're just, to them, it's mm-hmm. kind of revolutionary to the point that Marin County got a, uh, they, they were awarded a technical first place achievement award. I can't remember the name of the organization mm-hmm. that gave them because of what they were able to do using Jotform Enterprise. Yeah, that would, I mean, that's, those are some of the highest compliments you can get. Absolutely. Because when they look at it and they come back and they'll say, this <clears> thing has been an absolute lifesaver for us. I mean, you can't get higher praise than that. Absolutely not.
No, it's it's an incredible story, and yeah, going back to the the stickiness of the product, mm-hmm. I see what you mean. It just kind of gets networked into right. all the operations of a company, right. and especially once you start using other parts of the product, like um, approvals, you know, using the conditional logic tables, uh, it just everything starts networking with each other and with all right. the other solutions, and it gets hard for a company to leave. And I think that's kind right. of kind of the point a little bit, and it's right. mutually beneficial. It, it, absolutely, because that's what you want to do. You want to become so important to somebody. They can't think about trying to run their business without you. Yep. And that's where we become for some of these businesses. We are just as important as their, their accounting systems. Yep. yep. Stickiness. Yep. Stickiness. Um, so we've talked about you know some of the benefits that that we offer and some of the you know amazing things we will do with Jotform Enterprise and help help customers. But just more more broadly, um, you know, specific to Jotform or just b- being a software solution. What are the, some of the major challenges you'd say that we've encountered expanding this side of our business specifically? Because I can't imagine. It's always smooth sailing. Mm-hmm. You know, there are definitely logistics and, and hurdles to overcome because we've grown quickly this side of the business, very quickly. Yep. Um, so, from your perspective, what have been some of the the major challenges of that growth? I think our challenges have been keeping up with the growth. That's um, a good problem. To have. I mean, those are the best problems yes. you want to have. It's as opposed to the other side of that equation. For us, it's been we have grown so fast and it continues to grow fast. It's having sufficient number of say business development managers to cover the territory efficiently, having enough support people to help mm-hmm. out all the customers as they grow. It's just keeping up with the growth. Um, we're not seeing any slowdown in the future. It continues to grow. Mm-hmm. Every month, we're just adding more and more and more. And that's not only new users, but existing users renewing their plans. And so it's it's the challenge has been controlling this rapid growth. Mm-hmm. Um, these are the kind of situations that you love to be part of because right. very few people get to get to have their hands in the reins when you go through a growth spur right. like this and to be in it is is one insanely fun i mm-hmm. mean it's so much fun to see where you started and where you're at today but you know just the day to day problem solving that comes with these things and you just you look at things and you go i can't believe we're in the middle of this this is just everybody's dream to have this kind of growth right and again we don't see an end to it which is which is great, and yeah. especially as you're talking about like before, even looking back three, four, five years, it would have been would have been hard to imagine. Yeah. Um, I'm curious. I you know we've we've talked more broadly about about Jotform Enterprise. I kind of am curious to shift more a little bit to to you specifically and sort of your role as VP of Sales Operations and kind of the things that entails. How has your role sort of changed day to day in the last three to four years? Like you come into the office, like what does your day look like now on a general level? Level, as opposed to what it used to look like three, four, or five years ago. Yeah, three or four or five years ago, I was not only was I doing a lot of what I'm doing now on the enterprise side, but I was also serving as the chief marketing officer yep. for the company. So I was marketing the whole company at that time, and so I, you know, a little bit of enterprise, an awful lot of standard product on the, on the side. As enterprise grew, obviously I started moving more into this part of it. But when I come in in the morning, it's what happened on the I call it the overnights, right? Mm-hmm. What what came in from Europe? What came in from mm-hmm. Asia? It's around the it's clock. Twenty four. We're, we're twenty four yep. seven, yep. and everybody's got different holidays yep. and different working times. So yep. it just it just never stops, and you can see it. You can see the business actually chasing the sunrise as the number of leads come in every day, number of questions come in, things like that. So I look at what new leads have come in get those put into the pipeline, get those processed, look at all the payments that have come in, get mm-hmm. those, make sure those that's get... Important. The, the, that's important. That's the oil <laughs> that keeps the machine going. Um, so we have to make sure that that's all handled up. We have to invoice people. We've got uh, we have security questionnaires that we have to kind of manage and ferry through the various departments that have to you know answer those for us. Um, answering questions from our sales team, answering questions from our executive board, that one mm-hmm. of our executive team that asks me questions about things. Um, it's just that day-to-day... Yep. Running a business, you're still very much in like the nuts and bolts of it. Like oh. you, you, you're down on the ground. You're in the trenches. You're doing the deeds. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. So you, you have to feel very connected to the business. I'm I, sure. You know, it's funny. Way. Somebody, anybody, pretty much, can ask me a question about how do we do this. It's like I, I know it because I'm down in the. Like, yep. see, I'm in the trenches. I'm up to yep. my elbows in it, and it's just. You just know how to day to day stuff, yeah, which is great. What, what would you say is your your favorite part of the job? I think it, well, it's it's working with the team. Mm-hmm. I mean, the technical people I work. I mean, I'm just always blown away by how smart they are. That's yeah. the one thing I just 
never. I'm always surprised when I'm not surprised. I mean, you give you give them an idea and they come up with a solution, and it's yeah. just like, how did they do this? That's so that's the first part of it. The other part is like our sales team is great to work with. They're all very easy to get along with. They answer questions all the time. They help me out all the time. Mm-hmm. I help them out. So there's a it's very much a teamwork environment because we're all in the same boat and we all know it, and we're all paddling the oars in the same direction, and that's what makes it great. You know, no one's out there trying to do something by themselves. So I think the teamwork that we've instilled on the on everybody um, makes it an awful lot of fun. So you don't worry about is this person going to drop a drop a bomb on us yeah. today or something like that. It's like everybody's doing their thing, and that's and that makes it. That makes you want to come in and do work yep. because you you know you're you're going to have a good time. And that's all you can ask for yeah. at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, you know, through through this journey of again growing and scaling this this business, uh, two two questions. You might not have answers to both of them. Just curious. What's what's one thing that you've learned above all others, and what's something about your role that might surprise people to know? I think the one thing that I've learned. What well, is so much I've learned over this time, but it's it's. Really, what it takes to grow a company, grow a division within a company. I mean, we're kind of like a startup within the company in mm-hmm. a way. But just really, what it takes to do that. I mean, I've worked for other startups, for other, other SaaS startups in my career, and this is like that, but ten x mm-hmm. at least. There's so much more you have to watch for. There's more detail you have to keep your eye on. And I jokingly say, we're sometimes it's like the ocean. You just cannot turn your back on it for a second because if you do, you're going to get swamped. Yeah, and so. That's part of it is you just really have to be in tune to what's going on everywhere. So you always have to stay on top of things. Um, you know, the other stuff, it's just you just continue to grow. I mean, yeah. that's that's the thing is there's always something new to learn. I'm surprised. <laughs> I mean, look, I'm an old dog. I've been in business for a very long time. But I'm surprised at how much I still learn every day. Mm-hmm. What new things are out there? What new techniques are coming up? Or somebody's got an idea someplace. It's like it, we're know. in such a fast-moving industry too. Things oh, I feel like are always evolving, always changing. Clients yeah. are talking about new things that you have to address. Yeah. That's one of the cool parts about it. it doesn't feel static. Oh, um, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, I, just even from a marketing perspective, where my career started and where I'm at today, it's just like there's things we're doing now that we only dreamed of back then. Yep. Now we're now it's routine stuff now. Um, but it's just it's you know that that's the kind of things that you just keeps you going because you're, you, you're getting fed this intellectual types of information. And if that's what you like to do, which I love to do, it's just it's like a dream come true because you're just never going to get bored. There's mm-hmm. no reason to be bored either. Yeah, not a, not a job form. I can yeah. attest to that myself. Yeah. Um, I guess if you could give one piece of advice to, let's say, a, a smaller company who's in sort of a similar situation, who's looking to grow and grow their business to larger enterprise companies and offer that solution, if you had narrowed down to like one piece of advice, what what would you tell that that startup who's trying to enter this field? I would say know, know your customer, uh, know the problem you're trying to solve, and come up with the best solution you have to solve that problem. Easy it may be that. it may be your own problem that you're trying to solve, mm-hmm. and other people have the same yep. one. Um, but it's really understand who that customer is, and then what is that core problem? Mm-hmm. Because that's I would say at Jotform, this is what our we've. We do this, right? It's our life blood. We, it's yeah. our life, we know people, what's their problem? What is their problem they're trying to solve? It is they're trying to get data collection streamlined. Mm-hmm. And you can either work with that Fortune 500 or you can work with a mom and pop yep. bakery. They have the same problem. That scale of that problem might be radically different, but it's the same problem. Yep. And some of it's just, I need to get names and addresses for a mailing list. Mm-hmm. Someone, you know, even in the Fortune 25. Obviously, they're dealing with billions of people, but that mom and pop might be dealing with a thousand. Same problem. Scale Same problem. Scale, scale is just a little bit different. Yep. Know the problem and know how to address it. Yep. Uh, words of wisdom there. Uh, we've covered a lot here. Uh, I think that's most of everything I had in my list. Is there anything uh, we left out or maybe didn't cover in some of the questions already? Any final words? No, I would just say anybody that's watching this or anything is, um, you know, enterprise is probably one of the most exciting things that happened in John mm-hmm. and, and since we were started. Um, and there's just so much things we've got in the pipeline that are coming down the road in the next you know yeah. next couple of months next couple of years um, I just encourage anyone to come check it out because it's it, it literally can change your company literally. You know, for the better yeah. and it makes people just when people get it they're excited so I would say uh, everybody out there come on and join join the fun you heard it from the man himself yeah. exciting times here indeed well thank you so much for your time Steve uh, I've learned a lot here as well it's been really awesome to have you on the show and hear some of these things from from you directly uh, so appreciate you you taking the time yeah my pleasure anytime <laughs> <laughs>